Well, Kinder Team Oi the Mass Ari Rodney Parade, Gesi Ayr Gadar Hafford. Uh, where before the teams make it out onto Rodney Parade, I had a chat with the coaches, starting with Glenn Delaney. Been with you, uh, Jack Morgan. Rodney Parade at this time of the morning. Well, we're enjoying the glorious surroundings. I mean, it's a beautiful morning, isn't it? And I think uh, if it stays like this, we should have a really good, uh, good game of footy on at midday. What are you looking to get from the, the Dragons team you've selected today? Uh, <laughs> But there's a lot. There's a lot of youth out there, and there's a, I think we're we're trying to present some opportunity for for the guys who potentially not have had not have had as much game time as, as others. Um, we're pretty proud of, of the young guys that we've got in the squad, and it's just about finding opportunities for them to showcase their their skills and 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 hopefully put some pressure on those above them. Good game of footy. That's where you want to see, I mm. guess. You want to see the depth of. The Scarlet Squad. Yeah, exactly, and and I think part of the challenge with COVID is there's not enough rugby out there. So you know, Dean, myself, Toby, we've we've all agreed to have games. I think John as well with uh, with the Blues. So we're trying to find a solution to the problem ourselves by getting as much rugby in as we can because you know otherwise it's going to be a long time between drinks for these boys. And we need to see how they're developing, how they're performing, but also they need to have a chance to put their hands up to to play in the league matches. So I think today's a a brilliant opportunity, and um, you know all the coaches are on board with uh, getting as much rugby on as we can. So it's uh, it's good to see it on. Uh, albeit at midday, which will be good fun. Well, Glenn Delaney, Othona, Priva Fordura Scarlets. That was uh, Glenn Delaney, in the head coach of the Scarlets. Alongside me is uh, Garan Evans, a man that played nearly 350 Garan games for the Scarlets. How many was it? <laughs> 343. Not that I was counting. <laughs> Well, what are you expecting to see today? There's a lot of boys out here that haven't played any rugby at all for a long, long time. It's not maybe going to be as, as smooth as that to start with, but it's a great experience for them. Yeah, well, it probably won't be the, the slickest of starts. I, I imagine it'll take a, take a while to get into the game, especially uh, from a, a number of players, really, who, who haven't yet played any rugby at all um, this season. You can do as much training as you, as you want as a player. There's nothing like uh, experiencing game time, the intensity of the hit, of the tackle, um, uh, the intensity with the added pressure of game situations. It's a, it's a very different, very different uh, makeup. Yeah, here come the Scarlets onto Rodney Parade. A few familiar faces for Dragons fans there as well, Agarana, aren't there? Yeah, there's a, a number of uh, ex-Dragons in the Scarlets team. Obviously, you've got uh, Tom Pridey there, Tyler Morgan, uh, Angus O'Brien. Is outside half, and of course um, on the wing, um, we've got Alid Brew on the wing. I think who's the who's the fourth uh, player to play for all four four regions today. So um, yeah, there's a, it is an extra bit of bite, isn't there, when the, when the players uh, play against their their former teams. Um, so they, they may, we may see some fireworks. <laughs> you never know. Fireworks at midday on Rodney Parade. Hugh Taylor in the back row is leading the Dragons out. Scarlet in their traditional red. And the Dragons in their away strip of the black. There's the captain. We can have a look at a few names here that potentially uh, you will know because some of you won't be as familiar with all the players today. But there's a, a few regular faces there. Someone like Lloyd Fairbrother, Garan, you know, he starts quite regularly in the front row. Then you've got Jared Rosser and Owen Jenkins on the wings, you know, sevens, Wales sevens players. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Owen. We've seen lots of him uh, in the Sems over the years, haven't we? And I still get reports from, from Garin, uh, his father, obviously, when he was coaching the Scarlets, uh, about his son. So, yeah, looking forward to see him. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a dynamic runner, isn't he? He's a very quick player, so hopefully he'll have some ball in some space. Yeah, Dan uh, Jones's whistle goes to start this friendly, I've got to say that, to reiterate it. This is a squad game. All the regions have fought into this. I've heard Glenn Delaney say that. At the Ospreys, the Blues and the Dragons are involved. Players need game time. Javan Sebastian carries into midfield. Loose for the Scarlets to start with. Blacker. Here's the first touch for Ali Brew. Powerful runner on the wing, Ali. Come back from Bath to cover some injury problems within the Scarlet squad, but I've heard some good news about Johnny McNichol. Inside ball, offload from Kennedy to Jones. Blacker there. First bust is for the Scarlets. Quick ball, Jones there. Rob Evans carries. 
front row union there. 9, 10, 12 positions. Javan Sebastian over the 22. O'Brien. Long ball out. Asquith. Six metres out for the Scarlets. Quick ball. Sebastian. Javan Sebastian carries again. But a penalty goes the Dragons' way. Dan Jones, the uh, Welsh Rugby Union official, deems that the clear out was a bit of side entry. But a good start for the Scarlet Scala. Yeah, it was a good start. It was. Uh, they took a while to get into it, didn't they? I suppose in a way uh, they used the big men, uh, Tex at number four and Alid Brew to carry some ball. But it was the angle from Ed Kennedy, off Angus O'Brien that opened the hole in the defence. Um, and it was good play from the Scarlets. Uh, plenty of continuity. We didn't quit ball. Uh, but the Dragons have missed, missed the kick to touch. Yeah, Pridey looks to counter. Running away from teammates. They do get there eventually. Roy Fairbrother making it difficult. O'Brien outside. Could be some space here. Combia. Tyler Morgan gets all the way to Asquith there. Tries to get the offload. Knock on advantage for the Scarlets. Came off of a black hand there. Another offload, Kasim Garan, why hasn't he been playing? It's just opportunity, isn't it? Callum, Callum Afoni has been playing well for the Scarlets, so there's, I know there's an outcry from Scarlet supporters that Kasim hasn't played enough rugby, but he has an opportunity uh, today and he's looking strong there. Yeah, Callum Afoni is a big man, different kind of player, Garan, isn't he? Yeah, and, and, and to be fair, when he's played, he's played well, so it's difficult to make, make changes there as well. I know, uh, I know Kasim is itching for some game time, um, but he has an opportunity today to set to set his stall over the coming weeks. O'Brien carries into the 22. A lot of former Wales under 20s in both squads today. Numbers, if they use it for the squad, Scarlets, Asquith to Brew, offload back inside. It's a Scarlet's ball. Blackhand got in the way there for the Dragons. But uh, where are we? Three minutes 20 gone, and the Dragons have been under pressure. Yeah, they haven't touched the ball yet, to be fair to them. The attack has been good from the Scarlet's. They're uh, getting over the game line, using the run as well, and going through going through the phases, aren't they? So they are putting pressure on, on the Dragons. I think what they've done, I suppose, to to start the game, they've, they've released the ball to the backs at the right moment. They haven't uh, kept it on kept the ball too long um, and recycled and once there's an opportunity they've played it and they have dragged the, the Dragons defence wide a couple of a couple of times and there was an opportunity there to Alid Brew I just unfortunately didn't quite get that that last pass into the hands of his uh, uh, of his of his centre I think it was Tyler Morgan who was supporting on the inside but yeah they would be more more than happy with the start from the Scarlet yeah Josh Lewis I think he might have taken a, a knock to the head Ar y gwefannau cymdeithasol, cysylltwch â ni, cofiwch, at Scarlets underscore rugby. Get involved on social media. Now, this is a young guy that I've seen a lot of over the years. Will Reid, talented footballer. Had a knee injury a couple of seasons ago. But he uh, created an impact for... for Coleg Gwent and the Dragons Academy. You might have seen him on Rugby Pow, but it's Scarlets ball in the corner. Morgan Jones, another under-20s product, came through the Leicester Academy, takes it, that's on the floor, advantage for the Scarlets, Dragons have pulled that down, Blacker wasting no time, offloads to Asquith, where is the ball, there it is, pops up, short angle from Kennedy, he stopped in his tracks, Great Rob Evans picks, it was indeed, oh! Rob Evans, white line fever, didn't quite have the stretch, Garan. No, not quite. No, not quite. Um, yeah, he'll be disappointed in that one. The Scarlets looked like they'd uh, they did enough to score. Uh, but Rob, just as he's looking for the try line, ooh, the ball's just dislodged uh, from his hands. But um, yeah, talking to Glenn earlier, um, he's uh, he's doing a lot of work with with Ben Franks. He's um, he's been influenced quite quite strongly by Ben Franks, new obviously new signing for the into the Scarlets coaching team. Um, uh, and he's learning a lot. Oh, and he just loses it at, he's the, got to work on his at the very skills. last, yeah, very <laughs> last moment. Too much drumming, not enough hands for Robert. <laughs> but great to see the Welsh international back in a scarlet shirt. First scrum, five minutes gone on this friendly fixture at Rodney Parade. Pressure coming on. Falls in on this side. 
on Dan Jones's side. It's uh, Rob Evans against Lloyd Fairbrother. They have faced each other a few times. Mm. Dragon's been under pressure, haven't they, the first uh, few minutes? Haven't uh, yet had any ball, so it's just an opportunity now to clear their lines, try and get back, uh, get back into the game, and hopefully nick, uh, nick the scarless line from uh, um, from the next phases of play. Yeah, you look at both teams, Garan, and you, you would say that it predominantly the scarlets are, are a little bit stronger on paper. But paper counts for nothing in rugby. We know that. No, no, it doesn't. Um, and yeah, they've taken different views on the game. I mean, there's a strong scrum from the Scarlet saying they've turned the ball over. Yeah, and the hand is out as well. A little bit of advantage. They're marching it forward. The whistle goes. Blacker takes it swiftly again. Angus O'Brien put down by Will Reed. Ball is there again. Brew with the base. Rob Evans there now. Will he pick? Will it be an offload? Pressure is all the Scarlets. Morgan Jones. About a metre short, change of direction from Kasim. He's about a yard short now. Okay, he is holding, but he's got 10 metres off the track. No advantage, come back for the original offence. Kasim was holding on at the base there. Yeah, it's been quite a high tempo game, the Scarlet, isn't they? They uh, don't want to waste much time, they're taking the quick taps. Uh, they want to keep on uh, keep on working the ball, working the Dragons' defence from side to side. Um, and it's something they haven't quite been able to do yet uh, so far this season. They played Munster first game of the season. Huge penalty account against Munster. Munster killed a lot of ball, therefore the Scarlet didn't really get the game going, although they controlled the majority of the game. And last week, an attack, they lost of penalties uh, against the Scarlets last week. So again, they didn't really get the attack game going. So they definitely see it as an opportunity today to try and see a bit more, uh, a bit more rugby, a bit more open play as they associate with the Scarlets. They're told to use it, and they do. Two planned again, bringing Asquith in, playing some Dragons defenders in. But Ben Fry strong he in, the, is over in, the the ball. in the tackle there to be fair. He put a he put a try saving tackle in about two minutes ago. Um, and again he's turned the ball over and got the penalty for the dragons. He's a, he's a he's a strong young man, very strong over the ball. Will Reed clears, but again, I can't find the touchline. Scarlett's open it up one way, then back, Angus O'Brien. He's got a wall of black in front of him. Pridey through the dummy. Maintain possession. Dane Blacker there again. Rob Evans behind Tyler Morgan. Ooh, they're under pressure. Javan Sebastian does well to hold on to that. They come left, there's a chance. Rob Evans. That's what you get, Garan, if you haven't played in a while. You're desperate to carry. Oh, lovely long ball. Advantage for the Dragons. We come back for the scrum. Well, you see a little bit of that. If you haven't played in a long time, you just want to create an impact, be it with a ball or, or, or distribution-wise. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was uh, Rob Ebbs. Maybe could have uh, could have passed the ball a bit earlier there, but he decided to to carry. And you uh, you can't blame him. He hasn't played in in months, has he? But uh, Dragons, just a couple of mistakes in possession, and they they found uh, failed to find touch a couple of times it just puts them immediately uh, back under pressure when they do have an opportunity to clear the lines get back in the game um, a couple of basic basic errors from the Dragons yeah, beautiful long ball the offload back inside yeah Ed Kennedy with the offload had to had to try it I think he was going into touch but uh, Tom Pridey not in a position to to take the ball unfortunately um, and to be fair uh, the Dragons' defence in its opening 10 minutes has been has been strong enough to keep the Scarlets out. They've had a couple of opportunities, but the scramble defence has been strong enough from the Dragons. Yeah, they have been under pressure. There is Rob Evans. Never easy coming back, especially from a neck operation. Especially when you're sticking your head back in the front row. Yeah, and he's had a, a number of injury issues, hasn't he, over the last couple of years. And when you look at he was um, first choice... Uh, with Wales, he's had a couple of problems that have just cost him his place with Wales, but also um, with Wynne Jones coming through uh, strongly. Um, it cost him his, his place at the Scarlet as well, so he'll be eager to get some rugby behind him um, and stake his claim uh, yet again. Opportunity now over the next couple of months to, to get regular rugby uh, a starter with the Scarlet. Scrum is on the deck. 
Rob Edmonds not happy with that one as we see Jared Rossa carry over the gain line for the Dragons. Baldwin, Luke Baldwin gets there. Dane Black has taken a little blow. He's down, but it's a penalty. Holding on. Paul Asquith there doing the job of an open side. Strong over the ball. Yeah, unfortunate for the for the Dragons there. It was a it was a great carry from Rosser off, off, off the scrum with an organised defence. Um, we won some great yards and it was a great ball for the Dragons, but um, I'm not sure. I think the decision was um, an extra roll uh, from the attacker, which uh, unfortunately the, the refs have been told to clamp down on them this season. Yeah, yeah that's Joe Maxim. Uh, hard, to, hard to see really, but um, yeah, an extra roll from the referee. And conceded the penalty in attack, and it, it does take a while as a player, doesn't it? Unfortunately, when they do make these rule changes, they tinker with the rules. It does take a while to to, to get the mentality correct for the game. They still want to. Oh, it takes a while to, for the old habits to to move away from uh, from the players, doesn't it? And we do see a lot of penalties in for it for the against the attacking team, and it does it doesn't help with the continu uh, continuity of the game, does it? Not at all. Angus O'Brien looking for the first point of this match. He struck that well. Handles Important that, uh, that the Scarlets get some points on, uh, points on the board, isn't it? They've dominated the first 11 minutes of the game. Um, and also, I suppose it it does signify that they do want to win the game. It would have been, uh, you know, if it was just a run out for the players, I'm sure they would have kicked it for the corner and tried try to work the driving line out or, 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 well, or whatever else they want to do. But, um, yeah, it does signify they probably is important that they go for the three points it's a, they want a game simulation Garen in essence this you know could be these guys could be uh, capable of playing in the Guinness Pro 14 in European competition so they want it to be as real as possible yeah and um, yeah it is it is important isn't it it's a, the, it's a skill also isn't it to, to read a game and to understand when when right we take an easy three points as an offer or we kick for the corner so it is a it is a skill and probably the right decision there from from Jack Morgan whether he got a, a message from the coaches on the side I'm not uh, not too sure but uh, yeah the correct decision once the once the kick goes over it's a 3-0 read and uh, they've got something to show for the first 11 minutes of pressure of the Scarlet. Dean Blacker getting rid of treatment it's never great as a scrum half if you get a knock to the fingers as you've got your hands on that, on the egg, for the majority of the game. Tell us where you're watching today. Ara Gwevane Camde Thassol, Halok Negese on Mill, at Scarlets underscore rugby. Bidig Baden Ghi, on the day minute again, Tama. Almost 12 minutes gone at Rodney Parade, 3 0 to the Scarlets. An ex Rodney Parade boy, an ex Dragon, Tyler Morgan collects for the Scarlets. He starts in the centre wearing 13. Dean Blacker, his hands are still looks a bit in a bit of pain there as he raises the box kick. David Wells as well under that high ball. Fry carries through one tackle and an offload. But the ball has gone to the floor. If the Scarlets use this, Sebastian to Kennedy. Kennedy a long ball to Brew. Couldn't quite grab it. And like you do, couldn't quite um, couldn't quite reach the pass. Um, but a great burst from Fry again in, in midfield, wasn't it? He's uh, he's uh, he knocked a couple of boys out the way. It's just unfortunately um, the ball went forward from number eight to just Tim Basham, I believe. Uh, but the Scarlets turning the ball over, looking for opportunity. Um, but unfortunately, the pass from Ed Kennedy to Alid didn't quite didn't quite go to hand. But it's an excellent start for. For the game for for Ben Fry to be fair, he's turned you've got a to colour your hair like that, Gannon. Yeah, you know, you've, yeah. you've got to be pretty good, pretty confident anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And to be fair to him, he's carried that confidence. He started well. <laughs> Scarlet scrum, solid enough there. Blacker holds it a little bit long enough to tie defenders in. Brew carries towards the touchline. Hand is out from Dan Jones, the referee. Advantage for the Scarlets. Now then. What has Angus O'Brien seen? Oh, little gap there. How's he going to bounce for Combia? Well, advantage was over. No, it wasn't over. I beg your pardon. He comes back for the penalty, does Dan Jones. Kick didn't warrant it being advantage over. Team Basham, I think, 
got a left mitt on that ball in the ruck, I think. Yeah. It um, referee says the ruck had been formed. It was initially, but then the ruck disintegrated, so the ball did seem um, to be available. So maybe a bit of a harsh decision on the dragon uh, on the dragons there. But a good good vision from Angus O'Brien. Um, to be fair, the ball came back quickly, and he put a great cock well, a great kick across the field uh, to Ryan Combia. But uh, if the bounce had gone somewhere different, it could have been a try. But uh, back uh, back for the penalty and the line out in the scarlet. Same target again was Morgan Jones, black-headed well to collect. Brew, oh, great tackle from Fry again. He's had a terrific quarter of an hour at Rodney Parade. In the thick of it, Sebastian. Kasim, oh, in from the side again, I think, is the problem. I believe so. Dan Jones' his arm is in the air. Was it Ratuva that came in mm. from the side on the angle? Yeah, it seemed a very, uh, a very late call, and the ball seemed to have come out of the ruck before, before the referee seemed to, uh, seemed to blow up. But it's another attacking penalty. The Scalis have conceded a lot of the penalties in, a, uh, in possession over the last few games. They're going to try and negate that and try and improve. Um, and at the moment, it's not quite happening. Although, to be fair, Ben Fry did the damage, a great tackle, and Arlen Brew created the slow ball and created the opportunity for the Dragons to turn it over. Yeah, the new, not the new rules, the adjusted rules are there for, for for the game to be a little bit faster, but it seems to be slowing everything down at the moment. A lot of whistle as Basham heads into the centre circle and Rodney Parade. Football markings are out there. Reed. That's high, but it's not really gone anywhere. Who wants it? Angus O'Brien collects an offload to Jack Morgan. Sebastian on his shoulder, Javan Sebastian, O'Brien back on his feet, long ball tipped on. Ooh, I thought it was going to be a chance for Jared Rosser. But we've got time off, and I think uh, Dan Jones, our referee, wants a chat. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's um, the defender coming off their feet or maybe releasing the ball in the tackle. I'm not sure, entirely sure what, uh, what the complaint is from Dan Jones, the referee. Um, but it's another penalty given in the tackle area, um, taking a bit of momentum away from from Scarlet, but now an opportunity for Angus to kick the ball to the corner. They've got some big men in the pack, uh, the Scarlet today. When you look at Tavidi Latuva, um, Ed Kennedy at six, Jose Kasim at eight, uh, they've got some big men, and they've tended in the games I've seen. They've when the ball is close to the opposition try line um, they are tending to put a lot of driving lineups uh, together to try and suck in the dragons defense the big dragons players uh, before releasing the ball of right. so we'll see if that's the tackle this part of the job is done jones to brew there's a big gap there oh i thought play. he was gonna be in there blacker scarlet are generating quick quick ball fry is strong over that again has he pinched it i think he did initially Rotuva, he takes some stopping. Quick ball once again. Scarlet have got it to the deck. A lot of movement behind this ruck. Dragons are on a warning from Dan Jones, the referee. And the arm is out. Is that Javan Sebastian? I think he's stretched. He's got better hands than Rob Evans, Garan. I think the try has been <laughs> awarded. Yeah, the Dragons uh, are complaining uh, about the touchdown, but it's been uh, given by the referees. Uh, therefore, it's a try. The damage is done, obviously, a bit, a bit earlier. A fantastic move from the line out. This is what the, the forwards earning, earning their crest. Church, Avon Sebastian, low, going for the line. The ball definitely went forward. Whether he got enough uh, pressure on it, uh, the referee definitely thinks so. Uh, the try has been given, but it's definitely a clever move from from the line out wasn't it i was expecting the drive as i i, I believe the uh, the dragons uh, defense was as well but it was a, a neat move between dane blacker Ali brew and angus o'brien i believe um and just put Ali brew into a into a massive hole and then meant, uh, the damage was done and it was just a matter of recycling the ball from the scarlets forwards it was in the big men right like the two of it was a Kasim, uh, and the dragons running out of numbers in the end whilst uh, a javan crossing the line Conversion is good for Angus O'Brien. The Scarlets lead at 10 points to nothing at Rodney Parade in this friendly. I'm looking at some uh, tweets and messages coming in. 
come on the Scarlets. Watching from Kent is Marion Williams. And watching in the Wendreith, Rian Bond. As we see the play that opened up the Dragons defence. People watching from Perth in Scotland. Coffee and rugby, happy days. Garan doing a great job. Well, there we go, Garan. <laughs> People are happy. For once. Tyler Morgan clears for the Scarlets. Keep your messages coming in. I'd like to know where you're watching. Because you can watch this anywhere. Anywhere in the globe, I think. Watching in Eastbourne, in work. Well, Andrew Lloyd, I hope your boss is not listening as well. But there we go. Hope you're enjoying. Dragon seem to just... Uh, Keep control of the ball now for a number of phases, don't they? Just go through their go through their phases if possible. They've done too many mistakes in possession. Um, they've got slow ball now, not, ma not many options. So as the kick is coming from Luke Baldwin. It's not a bad one. Tom Pridey collects. Well then, Mark Jones has taken a bit of a knock there. Opportunity for the Dragons there as well, wasn't there? The referee, uh, it looked like a, a uh, bad injury to Mark I, I Jones, think, so I you think can't it blame is, him. Gara, I just caught him. His leg was, it, it wasn't actually in the ruck, but someone just rolled and came on to the outside of his knee. And I thought it was either an ankle or a knee again. And I, I don't know if uh, he gave a little ow. And then uh, Dan Jones thought, right, I've got to blow the whistle because this doesn't look too good. It, it might well be because unfortunately I think um, I think Fair Brother came through the middle of the ruck following Mark's injury and, and stole the ball and they, uh, the Dragons had a rumble on up front as well for the first time so they missed out on an opportunity there uh, Mark obviously being assessed by the by the physio so hopefully it's not too bad because he's another one obviously who hasn't played enough enough rugby they want to grab as many minutes as they possibly can today There's, with the Scarlets have got a a squad of about 31 players here so the reason they're doing that they're going to try and just utilize everyone at certain times isn't it to try and um, uh, for everyone to have an opportunity to play some rugby but um, but we'll see we'll see what they do uh, but this is uh, this is the try coming up from the scarlets um, recycled by the big men and here we go Chav and Sebastian you do see the ball going forward yeah. it's just whether enough he got enough pressure down he seems confident uh, Rob Ev seems confident um, so I suppose you've got to go. You've got to go with them. The, um, the best angle, I guess, was with Dan Jones. He was closer than, than we can get today. There is no TMO here. Nathan Kelly, where are you? Watching from a roof of a power station in Avonmouth. Or oh, can you see Rodney Parade from there? You're up so high. Scrum for the Dragons. They were in possession when that injury to Mark Jones happened. Free kick. Mark Jones has had a knock to the knee, free kick. Surely you'd set, reset the scrum, uh, Garan. Yeah, early drive from the from the Scarlet, uh, I believe. We've got a, we're not too far from the Dragons coaches here in our commentary position, actually. So they're pretty in animated. Um, I think this penalty should have come, but it's a it's a free kick. It's a reset to the scrum and another opportunity for the Dragon. It's a good set in the scrum. He's got to keep his elbow up there. It's a good platform. Basham opens up for Baldwin. Reed tries to find a pop. Brew came through on that. He's gone forward. So it's advantage for the Dragons. Rosser always looks dangerous with ball in hand. Another one who's come right through the system. Schools and colleges program and the academy program and the sevens program. Reed and Nairin Owen. We spoke about him. He is a talented footballer. Just bust through. Great offloads. Here's a genuine chance for the Dragons. Ball gets to Owen Jenkins. Just short there. Well, he's got up and gone again. No problem, I don't think. And I think Dan Jones. He's gonna. He's got no TMO, Garam, but I think he'll have a chat <laughs> with Ben Whitehouse. The question being, I think, will be: Well, did he have a second? Bite of the cherry, so to speak. Ah. Right, okay. Um, didn't release the ball in the tackle, but 
he wasn't held by the first man, was he? Um, and I'm not sure of the ground in anyway. But uh, well, again, yeah, I can see Ben Whitehouse possibly saying that he's held up, but no problem that it, Dane Blacker made a tackle on uh, Luke Baldwin, brought into the floor. But like you say, Garen, he wasn't held. Yeah, so the, obviously it's a scrum to the dragon, so it must be a it must be a decision that he was held up. Dragons living off scraps on yeah. at the moment, but they so nearly went over. Well, they did go over the whitewash, but it was uh, so nearly a try. Um, they're under pressure in most aspects of the game, but just a just a half opportunity there, um, and probably deserved the try. It was some fa it was some fantastic movement from the back line. Dan Jones giving some scrum advice to Rob Evans and Lloyd Fairbrother. Keep your bind higher and don't let him <laughs> turn you in. Okay. Let's have a look if they listen. A dragon scrum five metres out from the Scarlets try line. Well, the Scarlets under a little bit of pressure in the last uh, couple of minutes. Basham picks, opens up, good tackle from Baldwin. From Conbeer, rather. Corey Baldwin now is playing for the uh, Exeter Chiefs, so he's not here today. Slow ball. Maguire picks. Conor Maguire signed a short term contract with the Dragons recently, keeps him here until January. Penalty advantage for the Dragons. And back they come for it. It's gone forward. Yeah, Dragons knew the penalty uh, was coming, happy to go through uh, and recycle the ball in the contact. The ball was very slow, it was difficult to create anything from that opportunity, but uh, I think Scarlett's weren't on the, on the back foot. You know, we see the, the move finishing with a um, with the knock-on, um, but the penalty was given a bit earlier, um, and finally a, a chance for the Dragons to, um, to create some exerted pressure on the Scarlett's uh, defence. Indeed it is. Genuine bit of pressure. For the first time in the 23, 24 minutes, it was that little pre-pan move? And they maintain possession, have the Dragons. <laughs> Captain Hugh Taylor carries. Baldwin, going to feed uh, Maxkibu, the man who arrived, well qualified. Right from Connett, Basham again, back in the thick of things. This is a contest now, and it is a penalty. When a big man like Tex comes over the ball, Tevita Rituva, he's a tough one to shift, Gara. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a big man, isn't he? The ball was slow from the Dragons, it didn't, didn't, not quite slick enough from the, from the line. Now, just a slight mistake in timing, I believe, from the run from Ben Fry. Um, just created that slow ball and uh, couldn't quite generate um, good enough ball then following that. So, um, Tavitia Rituva strong over the ball is nearly impossible to move him. Yeah, I completely agree with that. What do you think about the game so far? Bethuch Barn Giam Performiader Scarlets are Drege, Casartuch at Scarlets underscore rugby. Get in touch with us. A lot of people are telling us where they are. Watching from Australia and Queensland is Helen Kirk. Gareth Davis watching from Perth, Australia. Watching from Germany. I'm not going to try and say the name of the place, but Rick Field is out there. I've gone a bit awry for the uh, Scarlets there. Knock forward. It's yeah. a scrum. Good work from the Dragons line, disrupting uh, Scarlet's ball, always untidy, they never had it under control and the knock-on came from, from Angus O'Brien. Um, a great opportunity for the Dragons, scrum on the halfway line, both sides of the field um, to attack. Um, we saw plenty of opportunity, we can see Jared Rossa is below us here in the commentary point, very wide, lots of room if we attack the camera angle. To be five meters back from the base of uh, the number eight's feet. The dragons are slightly deeper than that. Dan Jones wants them to use it, and they do. Scrum went to the floor, didn't want the reset. Joe Thomas has a bit of a story. The ex Osprey won a Grand Slam with Wales in the 20s in 2016. Spent time in uh, New Zealand playing club rugby. Oh, didn't quite get away from the contact area there. there. Did Rotuva, but Joe Thomas is on a trial here at the Dragons. 
Yeah. And it's difficult. And without much rugby, it's uh, difficult to show what you can do. That's why it's such an important game as well for certain individuals today. And Dragons, unfortunately, another, another unforced error. Failed to find touch. And Tom Pridey uh, clears it down the field. Um, and that's, that's been the, the big talking point of the game from the Dragons' point of view, unfortunately, to begin with. They, were, they had opportunity to, uh, to create pressure. They've just done too many mistakes, um, uh, small mistakes, but just in... When you're playing at this level of well, level of rugby, it's a it's a great learning experience. You have to be slick. You have to be secure. Slick and secure would be a good description of the Dragons' line out there. Hugh Taylor took it. They're still behind the gate line. Baldwin turns Brew and takes it. And he has a left boot, which is always handy when you play on the left side. Will Reed makes the call, and that's a better up and under. Angus O'Brien comes through it and collects. Well protected by Ed Kennedy there. Just slowing his run down a little bit. Call, use it. It's giving you good pressure on uh, Dane Blacker. No one wants to collect this. Who will? Fairbrother does. Does exceptionally well to find David Howells. And Irene Owen, seen one bust and offload from him. Owen Jenkins, a bit faster than his father, I'd say, is he? <laughs> well. Is that ball out? Scarlett don't think so. Baldwin plays it. Slow ball for the Dragons. Baldwin looking at kicking options again, possibly. Ball is slow, not much on. The back line is uh, flat in one line across the field. So the box kick will be the option. Well executed, close to the touchline. Good offload, though, from uh, Tom Pridey to Tyler Morgan. Game's gone a little bit scrappy, Garan, in the last sort of uh, five, ten minutes. Yeah, since, uh, since the Dragons, I see, I, I believe when it does go scrappy, they, um, they find it difficult going through the phases. So. Uh, they're doing quite well um, when it is uh, when the game's broken up a bit. Box kick this time uh, from uh, Blacker for the Scarlets. And that has gone forward. A little bit unfortunate there for Owen Jenkins. And the first instinct was to tap it back, but it somehow came forward Glenn, off the bounce as well. I don't very often when mm. it comes to rugby. Good morning. What are we yeah, doing? lucky. Oh, when we've seen, um, when the small ball develops, isn't it? we've seen a lot of extended rucks again. Uh, nowadays, and we it was something that they tried well, to work out, the the, work out to the game probably about eight, nine, ten years or so ago now. It is, um, but they are creeping back in the extended drugs, giving uh, the scrum halves a lot of time really to to pick the ball up and put a, an up and under in and a box kick in. So, I'm not sure if it's something the lawmakers will be looking at again. They seem to well, they want them to use it. it. They say of, yeah. you know, they got the five second rule once the ball is available, but mm -hmm. as you say, Gan, that long ladder is there for them. Yeah, and it was, um, yeah, it was sort of refereed out of the game about ten years ago, I'm sure. Um, but it is creeping back in. Um, it's no doubt that will be the next directive <laughs> from World Rugby, I imagine. That's Tyler Morgan, the next dragon, now in scarlet colours. Kasatuhani at uh, Scarlet underscore Rugby. Get involved on the chat on all the social media channels. Watching the Dragons against the Scarlets in this uh, friendly, a squad game, not really an A game maybe, but it's a, definitely a squad game, a chance for all regional squads to get some game time, vital, as international stars are away, the Guinness Pro 14 will continue. Good scrum for the Dragons, yeah. pressure, uh, for the Scarlets rather, pressure comes on, and Dan Jones's hand is in the air. Yeah, second shove possibly from, from the Scarlet set. Uh, Dragons are uh, strong uh, initially. Um, but the second shove maybe from a Rob Evans. Um, won the penalty. And uh, Scarlet's uh, uh, haven't created much really since uh, since that uh, try. So it's the first first time they're back into the to the Dragons 22 since uh, since the try. So um, they have another line out. I um, don't know if it'll be a driving line out or another. Another move um, from the repertoire. 
Well, you can see Conbeer, he is in in field there. Well, from the other side, Ale Brew got involved off the line out. Kennedy takes, and this is a drive. Power comes on, Max Gimu, he'll have to move from there. Javan Sebastian has the ball at the back of this rolling wall. Well, Lloyd Fairbrother is going to have 10 minutes in the bin. He's brought that down. It must have been an infringement from the Scarlets as well for Dan Jones, the referee, to blow. Yeah, I'm sure there must have been some warning a bit earlier in the game that, um, that we may have missed that one because the decision seemed to come pretty quickly, really, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, chance for Scarlets to build uh, more pressure. The, the mall wasn't going anywhere either, obviously, partly due to... The to the fact that Fairbrother they're trying to collapse it, but um, yeah, another opportunity again for the Scarlet. Yeah, certainly is an opportunity. First job is done by uh, Morgan Jones. Drive comes on, stopped once. Blacker digs the ball out. Asquith shows it once. Oh, has he freed his hands? Oh, he did just went forward, and you can't place the ball at the base of the post anymore. That rule's been changed. But it just yeah. went forward. Good, good move. Lovely hand from from Asquith, delaying the pass slightly. Uh, but Ryan Combia, unfortunately, the ball did go on from Ryan Combia. Um, there was maybe he tried to release it just a half a second earlier. Um, I don't think Angus was quite in in the correct position then. So delayed the pass and it just came out of his out of his hands at the crucial crucial moment. Yeah, see some changes for the. Dragons, that's because of the yellow card to Lloyd Fairbrother. On comes Chris Coleman, a man we've seen in the Guinness Pro 14. And uh, Tane Basham has left, so they'll be without their eight, stroke seven, stroke six. Yeah, the correct decision, no? you know, Ben Fry, Hugh Taylor looking strong. And I don't know when, is packing down on the flank, so they'll be uh, short, but they're going. For some added weight to get possession from this scrum. Not the first time Garan we've seen it go down. No. Let's go, please. Rob Evans again. Obviously making his views <laughs> known. <laughs> to the referee. As usual, you wouldn't it's expect like Rob, Rob Evans to do anything quiet. different, really. <laughs> He hasn't got Ken Owens there now, though, unfortunately, to keep him quiet, though, has he? Um, <laughs> Ken, obviously, with bad news in the week, out to the Welsh squad, unfortunately, isn't he? And, uh, with, his, with his shoulder injury, um, no doubt he'll be watching the game. I'm sure he will be. Pressure comes on. I heard Dan Jones say drive square. Yeah, he's got to try and drive him out on the loose head, but um, if you're tight head... He's on a little angle, he's just going to fold in. But the penalty goes the Scarlet, uh, the Dragon's way. And Will Reid will have a chance to clear. And he finds touch this time. Now, this is definitely my limited knowledge of front row play, right? But apparently, ben, that's what Ben Flanks has been working uh, alongside Rob Evans with, is trying to stay slightly squarer uh, in the scrum and drive slightly squarer in the scrum rather than get uh, than to follow the tight end and to turn in too much. So it's, uh, uh, that's about all I can add from a front row <laughs> point of view, unfortunately. Well, good play from a front row of Mark Jones there, an overthrow. Little flick on as well. Pridey does get it in the end. Has he freed his hands? Yes, he has. Here's Conbia. Can he get in? No, he can't. Good clear out from uh, the Scarlets. Backs there, Morgan and Pridey. Kasim. Haven't said his name too often in this fixture. Blacker there. Gone behind. Kick across from O'Brien. Brew is out there. Oh. Now Jared Rosser got a hand to that. Did he make an effort to catch it? It is well played from Jared Rosser, to be fair. Um, once the kick came, came in, he was on his own. Um, him and Ali Brew, one on one. And uh, time did well, Jared Rosser. He was never going to take the ball. He just had to try and make sure that he got in the way of Ali Brew, and that's what he did. It was, uh, it was well played. He had, uh, he had a couple of men to mark out white and covered the field excellently. Had a chance for the Scarlets. People watching from all over the place. James Donovan in Malta. Diana Doyle in Greece, Ervon Higgins in t -Cross. He hasn't gone far, but that uh, throw from the Scarlets has gone a bit, a little bit too far. 
Christopher Webber enjoying the match in lockdown. Mercer with his daughter, Amy. 35 minutes, to almost 36 minutes gone. Still 10 nothing to the Scarlets at Rodney Parade. As Luke Baldwin clears, that's touched. Aled Brew underneath it. Opens it up. Pridey to Conbeer. Asquith outside with Tyler Morgan. Asquith offloads to Conbeer back on the inside. Scarlets looking dangerous again. Kasim pass behind. Sebastian just overrunning it a little bit, the Scarlets, and it has gone forward. And lucky you could see it, 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 was, it was good play. They tried to keep the, the ball alive, didn't they? Tried to uh, rely on their skills um, with handling the ball. Uh, unfortunately, Javin Sebastian, I think the pass just went. It wasn't a bad pass from Javin, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, but not uh, not correct. The pass wasn't on, really. I think one of them had to make a decision, didn't they? He said, right, there's enough for this. I'm a front rower. I should carry the ball rather than try and look for the, for the miracle ball. Um, you can't blame him. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a turnover again. The game was uh, game has suffered a bit in the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, a number of turn turnovers from from bo both teams. Uh, even though it's still some exciting stuff, uh, exci exciting stuff being played. Yeah, definitely exciting stuff. It's going to be a little bit scrappy at times. You've got to realise that these guys haven't played rugby in a in a long, long time. Some of them. Pridey on the outside, does a bust. Brew, can he get round Reed? No, he can't. Blacker there quickly. Kasim, Asquith, Tavita Rotuva carries. No problem there. He's still going. Didn't really go into Morgan Jones. Fry, look to steal that ball. Pridey in a 10. He's dropped by uh, Joe Thomas. Good tackle from him. But uh, Chris Coleman trying to get a, a yeah, little, little cheeky, cheeky shot on Rob Evans. Come here, come here. Yeah, a little bit early there in the hit. I think it was Coleman and, uh, and Rob Evans. Uh, so the correct, correct decision. Um, lots of um, lots of space being found uh, in the counter attack at the moment. You know the Dragons are down, down to 14 men. Uh, but Tom Pridey. Uh, looking very dangerous in space, as is Alan Brew and Ryan Combe in the last five minutes. The three of them having plenty of ball um, and looking very dangerous and creating opportunities. Yeah, about a minute and a half left on our clock. Let's see what Dan Jones has got left on uh, on his watch. We're pretty close, I think. Scarlett's uh, with an overthrow on the on the last uh, line out. Um, the pack will be disappointed with that. Another opportunity, though, only five yards out this time. Jones, who will be his target? To the back, to Kasim. Good darts from the hooker. Rob Evans breaks on the back. Oh, on the back of that, almost got free. But the Scarlets have got over now. Who's at the bottom of that pile? It's the hooker. It's Mark Jones. I thought he was off with an injury. But he's over for the Dragons' second try. Yeah, well worked, right? Kasim at the back of the line out, um, setting up the drive, but recycled by Rob Evans, uh, leaving the drive very early when it was on. To be fair, Rob Evans saw some space, and I think he he got Coleman back, I believe, for the hit on him earlier. And I think he moves uh, moves Coleman out the way. Yeah, very strong run. And Mark Jones in the correct place, just to dive over the line. Well worked, try from the Scarlets. Yeah, Mark Jones, an old head. He has been around the block. You know, he brings a lot of experience to that Scarlet's uh, squad. Yeah, especially when you look at this next phase, isn't it? Ken Owens, unfortunately, injured with Wales. Ryan Elias will be playing with Wales. Um, so then the Scarlet's are looking at their third, their fourth, their fifth choice hookers now over the next period. So it's important to have that strength and depth. And when you do have somebody like Mark Jones with all his experience with, with Sale in the, um, over the years, um, and he's really fitted into the squad well. And unfortunately, Angus O'Brien hitting the post set, and it's half time. Yeah, it is half time at Rodney Parade in this friendly between uh, the regions, Scarlets and the Dragons. It's the Dragons nil, the Scarlets uh, 15. Hanneramser Scarletsiar Blan, Remwelwir. Gioni Bacho Gamra, Gioni Bacho Sisneg, and then us but the Dragons clawed the way back into that uh, into that first half after the Scarlets had started really well. And let's have a look at the moment of the half. And that was the first score. 
And that came to Javan Sebastian. Yeah, it was. Uh, Scalza missed a couple of opportunities before that, but it was a sustained pressure in the first 20 minutes from the Scarlets, and they deserved the try in the end when it came to Javan Sebastian. Um, Dragons definitely thought it uh, it was a knock on, um, but to be fair to Javan, he doesn't uh, get too many tries, so he'll be he'll be happy with that, won't he? Yeah, Rob Evans had an opportunity. He couldn't quite stretch there. But what do you, let's talk about Rob Evans. What do you make of his impact in the game? Yeah, he's been good, isn't he? I mean, he's a, he's a wealth of experience behind him now. So he does stand does stand out today. The Scalis scrum, it has been it has been strong. They've looked comfortable on their own ball and they've put the Dragons under a bit of pressure. So so the work that him, Jav and Sebastian, Mark Jones are doing in the front row is paying paying dividends. It's uh, it's just great though to see to see him on the field, isn't it? He's been he's been lacking rugby for for. A couple of years now, really. We just need to get him playing, uh, playing regularly, getting rugby behind him, and and I'm sure then he'll get his opportunities. Maybe by Six Nations time, back with Wales again. Yeah, let's have a look at that try again. We'll take it a little bit further back to uh, to the line out. Mark Jones to finds to his man. A little bit of a pre-planned move, and that that Dalit Brew bus really opened things up for the Scarlets. Yeah, it was a great move. It looked like Angus uh, on the dummy run down the blind side, but uh, the switch was made, and it opened up a, a huge hole for Dalit Brew. And, and to be fair, it was just recycling the ball then from the Scarlets. The, the forwards did the job, recycled the ball, made sure the ball came back each time. It was, it was slow, uh, but the Dragons, unfortunately, in the end, just ran out of numbers. The Scarlets identify their Tex and Mark Jones that they can go right. And Jav and Sebastian go in the same direction again, where the Dragons uh, lack in defensive numbers there. So it was, uh, it was always on the cards, wasn't it? Yeah, the Dragons weren't particularly happy that that was awarded. Uh, they thought that maybe Jav and Sebastian had lost control of it. But the second try, we had to wait till the end of the first half for that. And that came to Mark Jones, another front rower crossing. He started good. things in this one, Gareth. Yeah, good day from them uh, yeah. from the front row. It's almost row, like an Scarlet, action replay of the first try. Yeah, actually. it is. It is. It is. A ball went to the back this time, um, and another pre-planned move. They set up the drive with Rob Evans, um, with the vision really. To be fair to him, to see um, that there was an opportunity for him to go for the line, and it was a great charge. He moved Coleman out the way, and uh, it was easy for Mark Jones then to to dive over. Ah, it'll be longer than a yard uh, when they get back on the bus tonight. Uh, the Dragons, uh, they're not being completely out of this game at all. They came back into it. They had a nice purple patch, 10 minutes. They almost got over in the corner. And now you're in Owen. He looks good with ball in hand. Yeah, looks very comfortable. And to be fair, they are living off, off, off scraps. But uh, to be fair, when they had the ball in this, in, in this phase of play, they keep the ball alive. There's some great angles of running uh, from Baldwin there. Um, he does get... I think it's the correct decision from the referee. I don't think he's quite held in the tackle, um, but unfortunately, just couldn't quite ground the ball. It was good defensive effort from the end from from the Scarlets. I think it's Javan Sebastian diving in, um, hiding hiding the ball really from the referee, so he couldn't see it that it was grounded. But it's his only opportunity. The Dragons have just made a few, a few too many mistakes. They've had they've had possession. They just haven't been accurate enough in that in that possession. But some great play there to create that opportunity, but then there was a couple of mistakes from uh, the resulting scrum and the line-out. I think the ball was turned over. The only opportunities the Dragons have had this half. The Dragons players, who stood out for you? You know, you, you spoke of Ben Fry with his peroxide blonde hair. He, he's been excellent, isn't he? Um, and he's had a lot of work to do. Um, we've seen, we, we see him here carrying the ball. He's very strong there to go through Scarlet's defenders. Unfortunately, the pass doesn't quite get a hand. Uh, but before that, he put a massive try-saving tackle in, in the first two two minutes of the game. Um, then he was strong over the ball a couple of times. He's won a couple of turnovers. Uh, I know because of the, the blonde hair, it's easier to see. Uh, but we see him here strong over the ball. There's an opportunity. He's very low, isn't he? And impossible to move. Um, so he's... He, he, to be fair, he's, he, has, he has stood out in this in this first 40 minutes for the Dragons. Is that just because of his hair? <laughs> no, to be fair, he's, 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 he has played well. Obviously, uh, it's, it's easy to spot them when, uh, when they do the small things uh, well. Um, but no, he seems to have a real edge in, in everything he's done as well. He's been, uh, he's been great. Yeah, someone making his first appearance for the uh, Scarlets is, is Alid Brew on the wing. It, like you said earlier, Garan, he's another one, one of four that have played for all the regions. He's had a lot of ball. He has. It's uh, it's it run back a lot of a um, lot of the ball really that the Dragons have kicked and failed to find touch. Him and Tom Friday have created created quite a bit of space. Um, he's he's bundled over into the touch there, so he ha he has been very strong. He's he's 
decided he's counter-attacked at the right times to be to be fair to him he's taken on taken on players he hasn't quite uh, broken through that first tackle as we maybe expect him to do he's 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 that strong as a player isn't he um but we've also see him as well he's, he, his position in his is great here to stay wide for the kick and it's only excellent defending uh, to be fair by Rossa that that keeps him out there so him and Pridey and Combia later on as well have have worked together well as a new unit they've cleared up a lot of the kicking kicking game from the Dragons covered a lot of territory and, and counter-attacked really well well Internationals is what's coming next, Garan. Game around that all of me need to go the Igamri up at the Hivid on my kit now with get a Camry Hivid. Wales not only have internationals coming up, they have a new kit. Macron are the new supplier. Let's take a sneaky look at Wales's new kit. Where dreams start. Up and down Wales. A three Camry Gavan. We're in this together. Berlin Gedangele. And her death in her hinau noun. Drossing club. Drossing Kamined. Drossing Grad. Together, we build Rudiman Kravai. We grow. We play on. This is the fabric of Cymru. Well, then I kit now with Cymru. Uh, Dama a game at Cymru. Since the land of it, that was the the kit. This is the Welsh fixtures coming up in the autumn. Frank and Erbin Cymru, Cymru and Erbin and Alban, Iwerdon and Erbin Cymru. Game at uh, Barca Scarlets. Erbin Cymru and Erbin Georgia. Cymru and Erbin Lloegr. Cymru and Erbin TBC. Even look at team now. Ona and the Bunny are well mapped. That's a mind. And a guested layer. Oh, that TBC means it depends on where Wales finish in the competition. But some really great fixtures there for people to watch on S4C, on Amazon Prime. Great to see international rugby back. We haven't got the crowds that we, we've got and seen in New Zealand, but it's still a great thing, Garan. Yeah, obviously the game in the Northern Hemisphere it relies on uh, on international rugby, well, as it does throughout the world, really. But um, yeah, it's, it's such an important part, isn't it? It's, it's strange looking back now to the Six Nations, isn't it? It is an unfinished Six Nations. You, you can't really make judgments on the coaching team with Wales. That, that coaching team have not had an opportunity to coach uh, a group of players since the Six Nations. As Stephen Jones and, and Byron Hayward, I know, have been around the regions trying to do as much as they can with the regions uh, just to get that experience of coaching again. So uh, unusual times, unprecedented times, obviously. But yes, looking forward to international rugby, there's some great games there. And obviously, it's the Wales-England fixture uh, <laughs> again. Um, uh, they'll be defying the ban then to cross the border then, really, to come over, won't they? <laughs> well, let's have a look at the Dragons and uh, Scarlet's fixtures to come. Of course, the Guinness Pro 14 will uh, be happening during the internationals. Ulster against the Dragons is next for them. Dragons at home then against Munster. And uh, Connacht, games uh, that Ulster game is uh, live on Premier Sports, and the two other ones at home at Rodney Parade with the game in and view are S. Pedwarek, our Scarlets, Pumanu Juarenesa, Benetton, Ifurth, and Areidal away for the Scarlets, a trip to Italy next, and then two home games, Edinburgh and uh, Zebra, Gartre, our Parker Scarlets, Vino, my Premier Sports, I. S. Pedwarek, and Dangos, a game in Aigid. Not long now before the uh, teams come out onto Rodney Parade, but we have mentioned him briefly. We have to talk about Ken Owens as we see Glenn Delaney and uh, Rich Whiffin coming out there, the part of the Scarlets uh, coaching team. It's a big blow, not for the Scarlets, only for the Scarlets, but also for Wales. Yeah, of course it is. You know, he's um, he's a talisman for, for for Wales as well as the Scarlets now, isn't he, Ken? So he's a he's a big loss. There will be opportunities for others uh, because of it. Um, but yes, you know Ken was itching to get back. He's um, 
his performances for Wales over a number of years now uh, have been so consistent, uh, so professional, and obviously that's why he's he's had the caps for the Lions. He's he's one of the best in the British Isles as hooker, so he's a huge loss for 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 Wales. Um, Someone on the other end of the spectrum, you were mentioning caps and lions and that. What about Josh McLeod? He hasn't got a cap. First time he's in the squad and he's injured. Yeah, he's worked hard, hasn't he, Josh? He, he was knocking on the door last season for selection with Wales. Um, his performances uh, last year for the Scarlets were, were great. He, he was voted players, player of the year by the squad, really. Um, he's carried on those performances into this season as well. Um, and just at the last moment, unfortunately, that opportunity is taken away. He would definitely have had a cap, wouldn't he, with his uh, with the number of games that Wales have. Um, so he's missed out on it, but he's of the quality. He's he's still he's still young. He's got plenty of years ahead of him, and he's of the standard that he'll definitely have that opportunity again. Yeah. Scarlet are out on Rodney Parade. The Dragons are making their way out as well. Kovuchi Gasaltiani gerach barnechi am a am a game am at uh, Scarlet underscore rugby. Send all your messages in to us. We we'll try and get some read out. We've seen that people are watching this fixture, this friendly fixture, all over the world. Great to see Welsh rugby fans watching. Midday on a Friday. Just don't tell the boss, can no, I? Well, I haven't told my boss. <laughs> In question, but in Gamrag, well, they guarantee more than Hanner Kintamana, but Scarlet's are a plan of Bumthegi Idim, Tingwell Rubeth and Newid and Nile Hanner, but they will only Lotto Oil of the Ondig with. Yeah, now, but we're not, but they've been seeing anything with now with Lotto Oil of the Or Scarlet's and with them, and Tilly Mendebani are well with the Rayward now and perform now. Be sure, be sure with the Drake, with the Father Drake, yeah, just really great. The thing is, don't worry about them. Ram and just some tribe build trust or a lottery, lottery roid, and you know, him woman and. But kick your them quite dig on go. Where my Josh Lewis we him in band or can you go on? Um, on my will read me on my most mostly kick got him back. We go in an island there. Not sure, but not actually. Seventhly, I can little be and and hand there a scar. Let's let me not actually mean true. Come all away then. Actually, actually that bloody game no longer. Just as I am going to marry out there or try give me sure, but no one don't know. Don't know me near game. Don't know me near game. I am going to get my marry out there. Yeah, I got a funny feeling that this, the uh, Dragons will eliminate those errors and uh, they will come back into the game. And their captain is down at the moment, Hugh Taylor. I can't quite make out if he's a bit unsteady, if he's at a bang. Oh, he seems to be smiling. No problems, it was a penalty for the Scarlets. Angus O'Brien will look to take play potentially into the Dragons' half. He's not quite got there. Yeah, and it's important for Scarlets from a Scarlets point of view as well to, to regain control of the game. They were in complete control against Munster a couple of weeks ago, um, and a couple of decisions went against them. They, they didn't quite finish the game as they played for the first 70 minutes, so they'd be keen that they still control most aspect, aspects of play. Yeah, they didn't control their own line out there. Really good contest by uh, the Dragons in the air. Fair contest. Where is that ball now? No clear release in the tackle. It's almost becoming a non-contact sport, Gunner. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, no, I think it was Javin Sebastian in in there who sort of stayed in the tackle just a bit a bit too long. It's a bit too obvious, I think, unfortunately, in uh, in turning the ball over. But uh, a positive. Um, from the Dragons to start, um, penalty uh, deep into the Scarlets 22, and uh, an opportunity for them. And uh, you, you don't need to do too much here. It's about recycling the ball, keep the pressure on, and just see if uh, uh, if the defensive patterns will change at all. Yep, they're still down to 14, of course. I haven't got a clock in front of me to say how much is left on the yellow. I'll try and listen to Dan Jones for you, but it is possession for the Dragons. And Irene Owen carries into traffic. Basham. Are they back to 15? I'm just trying to look. How quick can I count? Good pressure from Aled Brew. And here comes Jared Rosser. He looked dangerous in the first half. All is there. Scarlet's line looks pretty secure at the moment. Coleman. And 
Alex Kimu. Carrying to that traffic, Javan Sebastian with a hit. Has Jack Morgan won that one? He has. He now goes forward. A little double move again. But a no arms tackle. Yeah. Realized Javan Sebastian. Looked like a good, uh, looked like a good, good hit from where we were, didn't it? Uh, from Javan Sebastian, but the referee in the right place. Uh, no arms, and unfortunately, um, but at least Javan's in the right. Uh, right place to, to make those tacklers to be fair to him uh, but penalty for the dragons and deciding to go for port uh, go for, for the post and to get some points on the board let's have a look at this again well, well um, <laughs> maybe a bit harsh actually i think uh, the call may have come from uh, for me there are two aspects to a no arms tackle garan uh, you know there, there's a if you get your arm up and you hit someone with your shoulder inevitably they're going to move away from you so you can't wrap your arm around mm. now if you've got your arm by your side and you lead with the shoulder then that for me is a little bit different I, I thought that Javan there he couldn't do anything about it he got his arm up in position a little he bit did. of a harsh penalty no I, uh, no I agree with you on that one it was um, he did lift his arm uh, as he put the hit in um, but I think the call seemed to have come from from one of the touch judges it seemed um, but an opportunity for the Dragons yeah, turns quickly, does Will Reed. First points on the board for the home region. Dragon 3, the Scarlets 15. Yeah, and important that they get uh, get the first score in the, in the second half. That's definitely what the coaches would have told them, just to work them uh, work themselves back into the game, get points on the board, and Will Taylor does exactly that. Angus O'Brien with a restart for the Scarlets. Long hanging restart. Finds his opposite number who will be under pressure. Quick feet from Will Reed avoiding the Ryan Conbeer. And Dav Howell's now in the pocket. And he's still in the pocket. But Hugh Taylor, the captain, carries. More into midfield. And they wait. Oh, that's a funny one that because Dav Howell, they had a perfect platform the first time. Now it's gone wrong. Kasim. Good option, I think, from Javan Sebastian there. It wasn't on. Tucked it up the jumper, just secured possession. O'Brien, little show and go. Tempted to put it back on the inside. Hugh Taylor moves away swiftly. That ball's gone forward. Let's see if we have got uh, replacements on the field. Will Homer has come on a scrum half. Um, he's one that sported, um, replaced him Blacker. Um, and made an impact uh, immediately, didn't he? Charged that ball down from the Dragons. Uh, looks very lively. Trying to get uh, trying to get the tempo game going uh, again for the Scarlets, isn't he? Trying to get the ball out to those out to the congested areas as, as quickly as possible, which the Scarlets did sort of successfully do in, at times in the first half. Um, so it, it looks like it's more of the same from from Will Homer. He's come from over from the the Jersey Reds, hasn't he? You know that's. Um Something that we've seen uh, going the other way. Kieran Hardy was over in Jersey Reds as well. He's now in the Welsh setup. A couple of the uh, the Dragons boys have been over there as well. Seems to be a good link. The right style of rugby being played on the Channel Islands. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a good standard of, of rugby, isn't it, in the Championship um, in England? So uh, they get they get a great grounding, great experience playing in the Championship in England. So uh, when opportunities maybe aren't aren't here at the Welsh regions um, as Kieran Hardy found when a couple of years ago as a Scarlet's uh, youngster then at the point at that time he decided to get, he wanted to get regular rugby decided to go to the championship played in Jersey Reds and then came back a completely different player to get those two seasons he had at Jersey Reds playing 30 odd championship matches in that period uh, he grew in stature, grew in experience, uh, and came back a completely different player. So Will Home has been a regular with the uh, with the Jersey Reds as well, um, and he's um, obviously come to the Scarlets uh, on the same ferry, no doubt. Uh, Hugh Taylor, the Dragons captain, is now leaving. I don't. Um, I'm not entirely sure that he knows exactly what's going on. I think he's taking a bump to the head. And that was uh, a couple of phases ago. But on in his place comes number 19, Max Williams. Another one through the academy, through the uh, under-20s programme as well. Where's he going to slot in? He goes onto the flank. Yeah. They'll keep a little eye on Hugh Taylor. 
to see the medic sitting next to him, having a chat with him. No hook there. It's quite difficult when you're under pressure, but uh, Kasim takes it quickly. Tries to get into the Dragons 22. Has he gone on his own? The answer is no. No 10. Mark Jones carries. Yeah, tempo for the Scarlets again, isn't it? Another penalty advantage for the Scarlets. Javin Sebastian is really comfortable with ball in hand. I will give him that. Good counter. Well, Homer did exceptionally well there. First time I've really seen him play live. Brian. Javan Sebastian spins one way. Makes two meters there. Good carry. Ed Kennedy into Coleman. Almost up to the line. No real numbers out wide. Asquith to Brew. Oh, he uses his strength and power. Still can't get in there. Good tackle. Uh, it was good defence from the Dragons, to be fair. It was. They were completely overrun with numbers. Angus O'Brien has taken a knock. I think Will Homer has crossed his, his body strewn all over that far corner. But the man I think we've just been talking about, Garen, has crossed for the Scarlet's third try. Yeah, to be fair, I think it is uh, Alid Brew. Um, it, great to watch as a winger, isn't he? Sometimes you expect a sidestep and a and offend and Alid just decides sometimes to try and run through people. So here he is, he's, he's had the ball standing still, uh, to, to be fair. But he definitely went for it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It is, unfortunately the Dragons ran out of numbers on the, on the far side. And it will Homer spots the gap and over he darts. He'll be chuffed with that one. Yeah, they so sneaky I didn't spot him. Yeah, yeah Alid Brew, what he can offer, of course, on the wing is when he, when he don't have space, he is that strong, isn't he? Um, and he's, he, he's the difficult man to stop, but to be fair to Jared Rosser, he's done an excellent job on uh, on Arlet Brew uh, today. He's managed to uh, he's managed to stop him each time he's had the ball. Uh, he did exactly the same there, uh, but just no numbers for the Dragons in the end. A few more changes for the Scarlets while Stangus to O'Brien uh, goes for the conversion from the touchline. Strikes it well and adds the two points. But Werner Kriya's on. Um, Kemsley Mathias, so a couple of front row changes for the Scarlets there now. As well as Taylor Davis, so a completely new uh, front row for the Scarlets. Can't yet spot anyone else. Yeah, this could be quite difficult as a commentator here with so many changes happening. But Taylor Davis, he's, he's back from an injury as well. He had in uh, Europe last, uh, last year. Yeah, it was bad timing, unfortunately, for Taylor. He's uh, coming through. He was uh, getting much more, uh, playing much more than he, he had been in his first couple of years. And it just injury came at the bad time. He's playing really well for the Scarlet. So um, good to see him back. Angus O'Brien has left as well, which means that Sam Costello is on another under 20s product. The man that came through uh, the Leicester Academy, Leicester Tigers. As did uh, Morgan Jones in the second row for the Scarlets. Homer. He's happy just to clear that. Yeah, he's a bit disappointed, isn't he? I think he wanted to um, uh, kick it a few, for, uh, a few more yards down, uh, down the field, so he's disappointed with that one. But uh, still gets the play up to the 10 yard line. Dragons line out. Sometimes after scoring, the best place to, to put the ball is off the field. Just takes the sting out of the opposition. See so many errors from the restart from many teams. An overthrow from the Dragons. Jack Morgan on the charge up towards halfway for the Scarlets. Homer digging for possession. Kasim carries into contact. He's held up by Matt Williams. Did he release that? I'm not entirely sure, but no penalty. And a little roly poly. That's up in the air from uh, Costello. David Howells came forward, but I think Asquith got it. Lovely hands from uh, Matthias. Rosser came in. If you're gonna it was a good hit, especially on a big man. I was like, going to say, if you're going to yeah. come in to, to pick someone to tackle, you don't want to pick Tex. Yeah, and he, he did he did pick his legs up, but uh, obviously Tex is so big, I think he, they just went fell back down on his back rather than any shoulder area. So. Um, I think they might uh, they might have a wood just to be a bit more careful. Well, in fact, it's a yellow card actually. Oh, it does okay. seem, seem harsh. Oh. He did pick his legs up possibly, but 
Um, if it was on anyone smaller than text, then maybe it would be 12 to the yellow card. To be is 22 or 20 something stone, is he? Not yeah, quite sure yeah. why. Well, it's a double whammy, I think, for the Dragons because Janet Ross has had the yellow as he potentially was coming off for Rio Dyer to come on the field. <laughs> but they're both sitting down now and the Dragons are under pressure in the corner. Yeah, I suppose. Letter of the law, Jared Rossa, no matter how, how big the man that you tackle is, if you, uh, <laughs> if you do put dump him, him there on his, yeah, you've got you, you to put him down carefully. Um, and, and it didn't, so maybe the yellow card might have been fair enough. Kennedy with possession, but they've lost it. Fry cleans it up for the Dragons. Advantage being played. I think I can see that Josh Reynolds is on as well in the front row. We will see lots of changes. His advantage still being played. I think so. Dan Babos is on as well. It's scrum half for the Dragons, and he does clear well. Yep. Good defence from the from the from the Dragons, disrupting the Scarlet. Same Barbers as well as, uh, <laughs> as Ben Fry. We might mix them up, but if we're not careful. Uh, good defence from the Dragons. Cleared their area. Scarlet's line out. Taylor Davis with the throw. Finds Kasim. Homer under pressure from Babos. Good disruption again from the Dragons. Oh, it was a clear out there as Rituva feeds on to Homer. He likes that corner as well, Homer, but doesn't quite get in there this time. If I was uh, to beat the Rituva, I'd have hung on to that and, yeah, and opened quite, his legs. Yeah, quite possibly. Passed it a little bit uh, too early. Um, unusual decision from the referee, Werner Kriya, obviously to the Dragons coaches, uh, beside us and to me, really. Um, sorry, Werner Kriya came off his came off his feet in the tackle area, doesn't he? But the uh, referee decides um, that it wasn't illegal, but it created a great opportunity for the Scarlets to beat the Rituva. Just passed it a little bit early, so I'd probably go with you there is if I was that big I'd never pass the ball Gara. advantage Scarlet's have possession right on the Dragons line looking for the fourth score as the My ball word. just goes into touch talking about tries John Llewellyn he's just only just found the uh, the feed of this live game between the Dragons and the Scarlet's who scored the tries well we can tell you first one was uh, Javan Sebastian for the Scarlet's Second one was uh, another front rower, Mark Jones, and the, the third one was scored by Will Homer on as a replacement scrum half. So it's 22 points to three for the Scarlets. The Scarlets just blew a golden opportunity there, didn't they? Um, three people waiting for the scoring pass, Tavita Ratuva, Ed Kennedy and Alan Brew, and they all seem to leave it for each other for some reason, and the pass goes into pass goes into touch but it's uh, it's still a scarlet scrum it's five yards out and the pressure building scarlet's ball in the scrum possession is clean it's like to keep it in there there's homer and Cassie. i don't think you want to pull it out of there I might as well try something now costello can he stretch yes he can he read the play well there something had it's gone well wrong they didn't plan that and he thought right i'm going to do something off my own back and he read the play perfectly. Yeah, it's a well-worked try from the Scarlets. Um, they worked well together, didn't they? Uh, Costello and Will Homer. Costello comes from the blind side. Initially, he goes from the open side to the blind. You're expecting the pass to go from Will Homer there, but to be fair to Will Homer, he ma as he makes the break down to the blind side, it's Costello that comes back to the open side and hits a great angle. Um, well played from the from the scar. It's a bit of imagination there. I don't know if it was a pre-planned move or a um, or a late call from 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 Costello. But uh, one way or another, it's a try, and Costello with a chance to convert his own. Yep, seven pointer. The man in scarlet's colours. Yeah, another obviously. If Unfortunately, the Dragons down to 14 men again. Um, they are under pressure. It's even more difficult, obviously, when you've got one less defender. But there we see the try again. He did well to finish it, actually, even though it was a well-planned, uh, a great angle. Um, he still had some work to do to beat two men and score. Uh, exciting future ahead of him, isn't it? 
certainly is. Gets the ball again, clears upfield. Does he find the touchline? Yes, he does. Very good. Always the best option in my book. Yeah, he's feeling confident, isn't he? He's uh, perfectly weighted. Kick just clears, uh, clears the touchline on the Dragons' 10 yard line. More changes happening. But up goes um, Ben Carter in the second row for the Dragons. Bill Reed round on the outside to Jenkins. Oh, great pickup from Homer. Picked it off his toes. How's his gas? I think it's pretty good. I don't think he's going to be caught. This is going to be a fifth score and a second for Will Homer. That came from absolutely nothing. Oh, Dragons be kicking themselves, unfortunately. It's a kick ahead, a good option from the Dragons. But Will Homer, it's great feet, isn't it? It's off his left first and then his right. And uh, the gap just opened up. The Dragons, again, still down to 14 men. Just lacking the defensive numbers, but uh, an opportunist, uh, opportunist try, isn't it, from Will Homer? Looked, uh, looked sharp, but it was, uh, I was most impressed with his, with his feet from a good hands from a low pickup. He's put a, a left-right step in. And uh, everything's opened up, and uh, it's another try for the Scarlets, who, uh, who are in complete control. Great conversion from Sam Costello. Extending the Scarlets lead. We see that great pickup uh, there, Gallon. Uh, great hands. Yeah. Yeah, it was to be fair. He was down and back up in one movement, white side stepping off both feet uh, and fully deserved. More changes. I can see Paul Asquith, Tavita Rituva, and Tyler Morgan leaving. We'll figure out who's come on. Johan Nicholas is one. I can see him there. Good to see him back as well. Not yeah. with injury. Pridey. Jack Price is also on and about to carry the ball. Corner Edwards on for the Dragons. He is. He's wearing no number. The man with no number. As Ali Brew carries up towards halfway. 57 minutes, 57 and a half minutes gone. Costello looks for another little break. Good tackle by Ben Fry. Dragon three, the Scarlet's 36. Two yellow cards in this game, both for the Dragons. It's hindered them quite a bit. As has the noise of that whistle. Being penalised a little bit more frequently now. That's what what happens when you're under pressure. Yeah, Scarlet's edging the decisions. Unfortunately, it's Chuck. Uh, it's uh, Ben Fry there, um, who who's penalised, um, killing the ball on the floor. But Costello fails to find touch. Dave Howells clears, and as he's done so, he's um, he's tweaked a little bit of something. A little bit of hamstring. Yeah, unfortunately, haven't had, uh, he hasn't had much opportunity today, has he, Dav Howells? Um, obviously, a, a great talent, um, but it just hasn't hasn't quite had enough ball uh, today. Seems to be holding his calf muscle there. Yeah. Just pulled something there. Where are you watching the game? What are your thoughts on the game? Let us know at, uh, at Scarlet's underscore rugby. Man of the match. That's the thing. Garan, do you fancy picking a man of the match today? Yeah, we'll do it as well. But we want to know who you think will be uh, man of the match. I shouldn't say man of the match anymore. It's player of the match, of course, I should be saying. As uh, Dav Howells leaves. Yeah, Dan Davis on, Carwin Tuapilotto on as well for the Scarlet, so they are making a number of changes now, and unfortunately, David Howells does have to leave the field. We're still on at the moment, and the game has restarted. Here is Carwin Tuapilotto. Big, big ball carry. carrier. Wrapped behind. That's an interesting little kick as well. Pride will be after this. Jenkins, Owen Jenkins has time and the composure to leave it go so it will be dragon's ball it will be under pressure in this corner 
Calwin Tupelo to another one in the Scarlets Academy. He's a played representative age grade rugby for the Scarlets. He's wearing number 28. Where was he at uh, college? Was he in Sudbury? I think he was. And uh, he's involved with the Scarlets as Babos thinks he's gone away. But he uh, didn't take it from the mark. Dan Jones, a referee today, just explaining that. Yeah, Dragons desperate to show something, aren't they, to be fair to them? And they've, they've battled well. Um, <coughs> Few too many mistakes as we've all, all already mentioned. Um, but there's 20 minutes left. We'd like to get some a foothold now in the Scarlet's half for the period. Just to just to get a bit of ball in hand. Try and go through the phases, try and go through the patterns, try and get some positive moments out of this game today. Yeah, absolutely. And a good patch in the first half. If they would have scored, things can change quite dramatically. Ben Fry, he stood out. Good Good feet, well. hair, yeah. Nice hair, nice feet. Will Reed. Didn't quite open up for him. Fresh legs for the Scarlets. They'll all look to make an impact in this kind of fixture as well. Yeah, and a slow ball for the Dragons, isn't it? Looking at the kicking options again now. Babos the box kick pridey back there he has looked very very safe under the high ball and the Scarlets have done this quite well as well taking a kick one two passes to lift the pressure Owen Jenkins using his seven skills Johan Nicholas after him Rio Dyer another seven specialist he's on the field wearing 23 good carry there from uh, Josh Reynolds Going to knock as uh, Morgan uh, Jones in the second row and hasn't gone forward. Basham, Reed. Oh, well played. Not a bad little option. Is it going to stay in the oh, field of play? No. Lovely kick in behind. I think they even noticed that Alibri was up very flat defending, isn't he? It does uh, does come in tight and, and flat. Looks for the looks for the hit. So the kick kick was put in just be just behind him. Found some, some found some space, but. Uh, Unfortunately, they just run out of uh, out of room. Uh, the dragon, dragons. A couple of injuries uh, at the moment. Ben Fry having some treatment, and Ed Kennedy, I believe, with the scarlet. Yep. If Ed Kennedy's coming off. I think Tom Phillips is on there. Ben Fry is okay. The dragons are back up to 15. looking who's on the field for both teams now it is quite difficult the back three of the dragons Jared Rosser Owen Jenkins and Rio Dyer some serious wheels there Connor Edwards in midfield with Joe Thomas will read at 10 Babos at 9 the Scarlets well, they made huge changes as that overthrow goes over the top of Tom Phillips but the throw wasn't straight from uh, Taylor Davis and the Dragons have opted for a scrum. Yeah, and it's an opportunity for the Dragons again. A couple of lineouts um, gone astray for the Scarlets, uh, given an opportunity to the to the Dragons in the Scarlets half. Um, lots of changes made, so I know it's, it's it's a difficult period in the game for for both teams. As, as players on, they want to create. Uh, create opportunities don't they they want to be playing next week and they want to put their hands up for selection but they still need to do that within within the patterns and uh, patterns of play of each team well this is advantage and this is going to be a score for the dragons great reactions from jared rosser that wasn't lost forward in the tackle from connor edwards that uh, dan jones said it was ripped in the tackle and we will see it again conversion is over they've taken that swiftly as well yeah. Ooh, I don't know maybe if it was a rip. fingertips <laughs> from you and Nicholas, maybe. <laughs> but to be fair, it's a very, it's a well-deserved try uh, for Jared Rosser. He's been uh, evident in the game from his uh, from defensively. To be fair to him, has kept Alan Brew quiet and also uh, put a 
huge hit didn't defeat the other two. Eh? Um, so he did definitely deserves that try. He only just come back onto the field, but um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think the ball did seem to be knocked on from a Dragons player rather than ripped, but it's a, a deserved try for Rossa. Yeah. That's gone straight over the far touch line from uh, Costello. Yeah, a couple of mistakes creeping into the Scarlet's game as well. 16 minutes left in this game, two quick scores for the Dragons. You, you never know. Well, you. Scarlets were in complete control against Munster, weren't they, with about 12 minutes, 12-13 uh, minutes to go. Um, Don't remind the Scarlets fans of that. No, oh, I know, it, it, it hurt, obviously, it does, uh, still hurts. Um, but um, they've got some experience, but the changes are still still being made for the Scarlets. Looks like Tom Rogers is coming on for uh, for Arlet Brew. Tom Rogers played well, started the season well, to be, to be fair to the Scarlets, uh, taking his opportunity. Looked very comfortable um, uh, in the Scarless team. Um, looked dangerous in attack and uh, did his work defensively as well. So he's had a good start to the season, Tom Rogers. Yeah, uh, Brew sits on the far side of the field watching play now. 65 minutes and there's uh, for the Scarlets. Penalty for the Scarlets as well. Maybe the play could have been let go there a little bit because Carwin Chupaloto exploded off the back of that scrum. Yeah, good nudge from the Scarlet's front row. Been replaced now as Taylor Davis, Werner Kriya. Um, Werner Kriya is probably twice as old as some of the players on the field uh, here today. Yeah, they've, he's been looked after at the moment, isn't he? He's, uh, he's obviously started a uh, couple of games uh, at the start of the season. Um, obviously, come off the bench for, for Samson Lee, Javin Sebastian. So uh, they are trying to look after him. He's been, he's Sure, I think he must be 34 or 35 now by this time. Um, yeah, but, yeah, so he he to pass, yeah, he's trying to manage him throughout this, uh, through the season, I think. Uh, Why not? Glenn Delaney and, uh, and the coaching team. Taylor Davis has got the ball at the base of this. How has that gone down? Now it's going to be a scrum for the Dragons. Legally, it's found the floor. Yeah, small wins for the Dragons, aren't they? Important at this uh, in this period. Um, the driving line-out set up again by the Scarlets. Um, but to be fair, the Dragons did uh, did their work there and, uh, and got the small wins. It's still important. They still want to. Still 15 minutes left, 14 minutes left in this game. Um, be nice to have an opportunity in the Scarlets half again. Yeah, some more changes. Reese Lawrence is on in the middle of the front row. Another one who signed a short-term contract until January. Especially uh, handy when Elliot D has been called into the Welsh squad. And uh, Evan Lloyd is on wearing no number of 10. And he's replaced the replacement, Will Reed. Another one coming through the schools and colleges, programmes and the academy. That's his first uh, touch. Finds Combia. It's Tom Rogers. He always looks to counter. No clear release, maybe there. No. Will Homer. Inside, outside. Finds Combia. He's fighting for everything still. Costello back inside to Morgan Jones. Good little offload there. Homer. Oh, and opened up. But uh, Sam Costello couldn't quite keep hold of that. What about um, man of the match as we look at our lead brew? He um, created an impact in the first half, did well, carrying the ball, was involved a lot. But who, who else has uh, caught your eye, Garan? Pushy, but then save it, Mar City in a game and a good year again. Yeah, he wouldn't take my. A lot of Raver really were in the car, and we have a Menanov need a pender Vanyar Himon and a tree old with Novel, a sketcher in and with Cardinal to a tree old with the win. Tom Freddy do are in the car. Tom, maybe one of them need a pender Vanyar, pender Vanyar, the Yawn, maybe they wish he he read a good bill, no, Pan of the Shay, um, or um, kick or bail for the hang in, he would be a performer very good on that. On he would have angus of play, you know, than your hard and the idea of the great game. So the right of even Vindam Ruin, Ernie de Will Costello and Galil Hanner, if I miss Clyde with Angus of Brian at the great game and everything. Can you answer my dear wish at all? I think I'm set at all the game. I do have to dig in it, I mean, 
Only the number we turned him back. Yeah, there we go. Garan is going to think about the uh, player of the match in this friendly fixture between the Dragons and the Scarlets. Plenty of players on show. 55, 56 maybe players. You might see them all on the park at some point. Up she goes from Evan Lloyd. From a free kick. Will Homer. He's been on for a half, created uh, an impact. It's an advantage for the Dragons. Advantage is over, a knock-on advantage. Babos digs for it. Coleman, there are numbers here. Jenkins, he'll get on the outside. Costello gives chase. Finds Rio Dyer. Did well to keep his feet on the field of play. Lloyd. Has that gone forward? No, it's gone back. Lawrence, that's gone forward. Tom Phillips reacts there for the Scarlets. The ball is there. Johan Nicholas loves to carry. Into the Dragons half he goes. Homer. You're right, Garan, his tempo is, is exceptional. He's quick to the bases, Will Homer. Especially with two missing now with the Welsh squad. You've got Dane Blacker and the Homer there at the Scarlets. They're in good lick in the scrum half position. Yeah, Carl Davis, Keenan Hardy in the well spot. Still, uh, still good options for a scrum half for the Scarlets, isn't there? On all courses, have got four new players come on onto the field. <laughs> the bench is empty, is it? 27. Yeah, Who's come on? It looks like front row. Some front rowers have only had maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. They'd, they'd wish that would always happen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a complete change in the front It row, is, they're so. all off, so they yeah. put another set on, so that would mean that Sean Evans is on with the Lang Evans yeah. and Harry O'Connor. They're all on. That's uh, still a more now on the deck. There is no ball to pop out, there it is. Basham. Babos. Real contest at the ruck. Dyer throws a little dummy as uh, Josh Reynolds carries. In strongly is uh, Sean Evans over the ball, and I think he's pinched that and has the uh, prop forward. Great play. Another come through the academy, schools and colleges program, the under 20s. Ball is there for the Scarlets, as Will Homer sets that long ladder again. Yeah. He finds the touchline, doesn't find too much distance there, so Galen, we'll, uh, we'll talk about player of the match and we'll let you pick it around 75 minutes. Are you happy with that? Have you got enough time yeah. to decide? Yeah, I'm still thinking. It's a Dragon's line. Reese Lawrence. Finds McSkewen. And he gets the ball back. Scarlet's come through there. Ooh, Tom Phillips was tempted to come in from the side. Lawrence into Tupilotu. McSkewen looks like he's going to play 80 minutes. Ball is there. Dragons going through the phases. Yeah. Dan Davis. See exactly who is on here. Dan Davis is on uh, 26 as well. He was strong over the ball there. Every ruck is a contest now, and the Scarlets have won that breakdown. They've won a penalty. Yeah, did well initially. The Dragons there, didn't they? Um, got over the gain line, recycled the ball, but just a few too many chances for the Scarlets to get in there and slow it down, and that's what. That's what happened in the end. Won the penalty. Cost lower than opportunity to to clear the lines. Almost got to play in uh, in pairs now. Sometimes one with a tackle, man that's closest to him. And then jackals for the ball. There is a small gap for him to go there. Line up for the Scarlets. Goes to the back to Dan Davis. See what they've got on offer behind. Costello, long ball. Picked on by Rogers. And with a 
touch the defence. <laughs> Joe Miles. Yeah, half an opportunity created for the Scarlets. The pass, um, a tip pass, I believe, uh, from the Scarlets. Created an opportunity there for Sean Evans, but enough uh, enough Dragons defenders there in the end to bundle him over the touchline. You can still, still, you can still tell the Dragons want to want to finish the game well. They want to attack. Well, you get the impression, Garan, that you know the boys just want to play rugby, don't they? You know they're just happy to be out here, trying to create an impact. Show the coaches what they've got to offer. This man has got some serious gas. Great tackle by Sam Costello on uh, Rio Dyer. They used to play for the 20s together. Good angle there as well by Josh Reynolds. Babos digs the ball out for the Dragons. Connor Edwards. And he's under a bit of pressure. He's wearing 20. Joe Miles almost got his mitts on that. Have the Dragons lost that forward? No is the answer. George Young. He didn't play. I think Newport High George Young was in the schools and college programme, if I remember correctly. Connor Edwards. Round. Oh, with an offload. Sam Costello read that perfectly. Babos is cleared out. Another one on the field. Joe Roberts wearing number 23 for the Scarlets. Taken quickly. Rogers. Oh. Tried to find Dan Davis. And he's taken a knock as well. A few players down injured. Homer's down. Rogers is down. Tom Rogers winded there, it looks like. Yeah, I hope it is just that lovely little dink for Joe Thomas over the top. He decides to kick as well. Rossa after this. Costello chased back for the Scarlets. Looks for the touchline. Well, he's done well, as he has done to be well. Fair. The pressure will arrive. Dylan Evans gets to the base. Good pass off the left hand from the loose head prop as well. Well, I think oh. that's uh, full time. I think he's blown the whistle here. Our clock was four and a half minutes just behind it. Has caught us a little bit by surprise, Garan. <laughs> yeah. We were going to just name uh, the player of the match. Okay, let's, but I have let's decided, do it now. Which is <laughs> yes, some positive yeah. names. I have decided. Come on then. Come on. Then. Who was to be, it? To be fair, you look at this. Look at the Scarlets front row in in the first in the first half, uh, especially performances from Rob Evans, Javon Sebastian, Mark Jones were excellent. Um, but who controlled the play in that first half uh, and possibly went under the radar really um, was Angus O'Brien for me was man of the match. Uh, I'm sure from a coach's point of view. He got the patterns of play moving for the Scarlets, got the back line moving when required, uh, put some kicks in behind uh, uh, a couple of times as well. So just uh, just controlled the play for the Scarlets and uh, difficult to pick one person, but I, I would have to go for Angus O'Brien then. Well, there we have it. it finishes at Rodney Parade. A score, Terva Nolvan in a Drake Yedig, a Scarlets Trede Chwech. 36-10, Scarlets victory. But I'm sure coaches have got much more from the match than just just a full-time score. The moment. Well, here we have it. A great pickup and a score by a replacement scrum half, Will Homer. Yeah, special try, opportunist try, isn't it? Back there clearing. Um, just the hands were so good to start with, but then in one movement to pick the ball up and to put in a step off the left and the right to send the defenders completely different, wrong, uh, completely the wrong way. Uh, it is an opportunist try and uh, and great. Was, they've had some bloody some good youngsters here again today, really, haven't they? And Will Homer and Costello looked really strong in the second half. Yeah, I'm looking at the tries here. I think it was five tries to one. I think it was, and we'll try and uh, show you all all the tries there. See the players out there now having a chat. How did it go? How did you feel? What was it like being out there again? You know, you will be rusty. You know, you'll feel the bumps tomorrow, Garan, from this one. It's different yeah. to training. Yeah, these boys, they haven't played to that intensity, have they, this season yet? A number of them, actually. Um, so it's 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 definitely something that'll be a positive from from both sides. The the Dragons, uh, they were more inexperienced than the Scarlets. The Scarlets were, have picked a very strong second team here today. Um, so you'd probably expect them to, to edge the contest. Um, Dragons will, will learn a lot from it. Um, it's just the odd mistake in the Dragons. They never, unfortunately, got their game going because of the mistakes. And it's just the odd mistake here and there. Uh, but nothing really happened. But 
what we did find is that the Scarlets took their opportunities, didn't they? And this is one of the best tries of the match. Um, a switch from Costello really went you know, down the look in as though he was going to attack the blind side of the scrum. Very late in the, on uh, in the scrum, comes round to the open side and just a massive hole. So there were a yeah. couple of good plays from the Scarlets there uh, throughout the game, really, that got the defences having to think a little bit differently. So it's, uh, it's quite a positive, a positive performance, undoubtedly, from the Scarlets. Yeah, that was Sam uh, Costello's try. I think that was the fourth try for the Scarlets. He uh, did impress coming off the bench. You know, that's a, an another name to look out for, another man who's come through the under-20s programme. Mm. Uh, what, what's your opinion? Is that programme working, the uh, schools, colleges, academy, the age-grade programme working? It, seem, it, it, it seems like it is. It's difficult for me uh, to answer that one, really. But, yes, when you look at the development structures and... Obviously, I'm, I, I'm talking from a selfish point of view, really, it's what, it's what I know really is from the Scarlet's development structure. So, so forgive me for that, but yes, when you, when you look at uh, the pathway uh, in the Scarlet, um, it is creating opportunities uh, for players to be developed and players to, to improve from uh, the semi-pro, the semi-pro game, the semi-pro clubs, all feeding into the Scarlet and to the development structure. Um, and then vice versa down to your clubs like Villain Vaughan and uh, throughout West Wales, all, they're all feeding into the development structure. So yes, um, you could say it's working. Uh, we've seen some great performances today from uh, from Scarlets and from the Dragons, to be fair. We can't discount the Dragons. There's some uh, some real young players on show, some players with uh, bright futures in, in Welsh rugby ahead of them. So it's all positive, isn't it? See the Scarlets having a chat, Glenn Delaney in the middle there. That's the first victory of the season, Garen, for the Scarlets as well. They lost against the Ospreys pre-season. And uh, they've lost their, their opening uh, fixtures in round one and two of the Guinness Pro 14. Interviews with the uh, players and coaches will all be on social media later. Kovjuk Kasatiani at Scarlets underscore rugby. Ni moin clywedich barn chi am a game yma. Odi chi moin gwel moi Do you want to see more of these games? Let us know what you thought of today's match. Let us know what you thought of Garan's. Garan Evans' is a player of the match selection. Angus O'Brien got that nod. But it's the Scarlets that will be happier. They had the victory at Rodney Parade thanks to some cracking scores. So we leave you with one of those. Diolch yn fawr, hwylfawr.